today I had a that buckwheat bread that I make, but on top I had spinach, tomato, and the uh, green chutney that we make using cilantro. So what we are going to start is really understanding what this dish is all about. So it's called upma, and it is think of it like an Indian version of polenta with vegetables and different herbs and spices in it. But it's it's kind of the polenta texture is what we are aiming for. And traditionally, it is done using cream of wheat. But I work a lot with uh, people with allergies. And cream of wheat, again, is, you know, it's, it's a processed product, so doesn't really give us the health benefits. So I have started using millet. And this is, this is American millet. I'm sure you all uh, know about this, right? And it comes as whole. You can buy it online or in any ethnic stores. And uh, when I started making the ulet, millet upma with a whole millet, I was not getting the exact texture that I was looking for. So then I said, you know, instead of using whole millet, which I personally don't mind the texture, but if I'm helping somebody transition to this healthy diet, I'm trying to make it a little more user friendly. So I just decided to grind it just a little bit. So some of it is a little fine and some of it is half broken. So we will start doing that in a minute, but before, I grind the millet. I'm going to start stir frying the vegetables and showing you some of the ingredients. So this is a beautiful platter of different ingredients. I hope you can see this. Okay. So we have some chopped green peppers, tomatoes, freshly grated ginger, and I always freeze my ginger. So it's available anytime I want. Some Thai green chilies red onion, dry red chilies, and a traditional ingredient that we use in this kind of dishes. These are toasted chickpeas or chana dal. Okay, chana dal is obviously a broken chickpea. And Chef AJ, we did an entire episode on different kind of beans and lentils, and people can learn about that in that episode as well. So these are some of the vegetables that I'm going to use. And to get things started with Indian cooking, as you know, we start tempering the spices first. This is my most favorite skillet. If there is a tornado or anything, I'm catching this skillet and running. So, and just to, when you want to make sure that the pot is right, you do the water ball test. So you just add a drop of water. And as it makes the, you know, water bubble and, and run and dance, that's when you know that the temperature is just perfect to start the first step, which is tempering the spices. Now, traditionally, we use a lot of mustard seeds as a starting point. And this process is called as tadka, which basically means tempering. And as soon as you add, you will start noticing that the mustard is, has started its dance. Even listening to this is very therapeutic for me. <laughs> and you turn the heat off and just allow that mustard to dance a bit. Okay, it has calmed down now. Turn the heat back on and just start adding all the... Oh, shoot. No, I, you know what, what I should do first? I'm going to add these dry chilies. Now, mind you, the fume, if you're not used to it, will make you cough. So if you don't want dry chilies, then don't add. Another trick to make sure that you are not coughing and choking on... Uh, these dry chilies when you are using it in the recipe is to adding vegetables to that immediately. So I'm going to start adding a green pepper and the onion and start stir frying this. And we don't need any oil. We don't need any ghee. Traditionally, this step is done with a lot of oil and a lot of ghee. And that's why Indians have high incidences of heart disease and diabetes, lower body weight which is a lot of people don't realize that Indian or Asians in general, they don't need to be overweight or obese to, to have the cardiovascular disease or diabetes. They get it at, at a lower body weight. Now, I want to talk briefly about these toasted chana dal. Uh, I have already toasted it, so that's why I didn't put it in the beginning. But usually, if you don't have the toasted chana dal, you can lightly roast it in the same kadai or same skillet, or you can toast it in the oven and store it. I store my toasted chana dal in bulk. I do everything in bulk. And just adding this toasted chana dal adds a little bit of nutty flavor to this dish. And this is just going to hang in here 
for a couple minutes until it's it's cooked on a low to medium flame and now i'm just going to quickly grind the millet okay so i have my neutral bullet and we don't want to crush it into fine flour but just enough okay one more trick I, I would like to share with our audience is while this is being prepped, I have started warming up or heating up some water because the ratio of water to this millet is, so I have taken one and a half cup of millet and four cups of water. Millet holds a lot of water, which is fantastic because that water is what is going to make us feel full and provide us with all the moisture that we need. So having hot water ready, I cannot tell you how crucial it is because it it expedites your cooking by at least seven to ten minutes so i always always heat up the water when i'm cooking whether i need it or not and sometime i don't that's it as you can see the the this is quite coarse can you see it here it's it's half broken now if, if i need a little more moisture to stir fry the onions and pepper no worries, I can either use my broth. I do all kinds of broth by collecting the scraps or even by rinsing my pots and pans because all the drippings, are, if they are stuck to the pot or the skillet, I can just add water and turn it into broth. To this, I'm going to add my green chilies. These are Thai green chilies. Now, if you are not a fan of very spicy food you don't have to but i have some special i don't know tolerance for very spicy food adding the ginger now oh this smells so good as soon as ginger hits the heat it starts to release its aroma and this doesn't need to be fully cooked because it's all going to get cooked with the crushed millet i'm adding some tomatoes now perfect i hope you guys can see it but do you see how beautiful this looks can you see it gorgeous it looks absolutely gorgeous and the aroma in the kitchen of tomatoes and peppers and onions and that ginger, that fresh ginger is what really brings a lot of flavor or gives a lot of flavor to this dish. I'm going to go and quickly get my hot water. Now, as you know, traditionally we use a lot of turmeric in most of our, our recipes. But this particular recipe doesn't actually use turmeric. The dish is usually uh, white looking. And another ingredient I forgot to add is some cracked pepper. Just imagine ginger, cracked pepper, tomatoes, onion, green pepper, and a little bit of that nuttiness from the toasted chickpeas. Okay. Now, what I need to do is I'm going to switch the stove here because I'm going to show you a technique to make this a nice polanta consistency. So depending on your comfort level, you can either put the millet in here or you can put the water first and then the millet. I'm going to put the water first because I want to do it the traditional way. So this water is already hot. So it's going to reduce, like I said, the cooking temperature. I mean, cooking time quite a bit. Now at this point, you can add salt if you want, but you don't have to. I'm not going to add any salt to this one because I'm going to show you how to make tomato chutney to go with this. Okay. Now, while this is boiling, I'm going to start putting together the ingredients for the tomato chutney. So even though we are using grain in here, as you can see, the by addition of this extra vegetable, we are adding another layer of nutrients by adding two to three different kind of spices in there. We are layering up this dish with more flavor. And that's how the food should be. We should be riding on the natural flavors of fruits, vegetables, and spices. And a lot of time people feel that oh, spicy means hot and not really. Spices mm. usually mean flavor. Of course, there are some spices which are hot in taste, but not all the spices are necessarily spicy. As this is boiling, I am going to start tempering my tomato chutney. Now, the ingredients for the tomato chutney, let me show you, at least for the tempering. Here we go. I have some cumin, garlic, and uh, dry red cayenne chilies. Okay, so as you can see, how the spice combination is going to complement the spices in the upma. So for the tomato chutney, we are going to start the tempering with, with cumin, a couple of dry chilies, and crushed garlic. Now, some of you may know, but if you crush your garlic, 
10 minutes before cooking, it releases the beneficial compound. So always crush your garlic ahead of. And you know what? In that, uh, in my tomato chutney also, I'm going to add some the toasted uh, chana dal. Okay, so while that is doing its own thing, I'm going to start adding, rather mixing the millet in this mixture. The way to do this, guys, is yeah, first few times it will be tricky, but when you will get hang of it, you have to make sure the water is boiling and you are slowly dispersing the broken millet fuel in here. And you keep doing it until the mixture starts to come together. Now, many times we forget that if we don't get in touch with our senses with our food and if we don't use our hands and fingers and our you know micro finger skills we lose our coordination so some of these techniques are going to help us fine tune our brain eye finger coordination and uh, so that's why i really like to cook using cooking techniques that are traditionally uh, being used so as you can see i keep i'm going to keep adding this millet half broken into this now like i said not everybody wants to crush their millet. If you like a little bit of nutty whole millet texture, go for it. All right. So going back to the tomato chutney, as you can see, oops, that was hot. The garlic, cayenne and cumin has come together. And to that, I'm going to add a can of organic diced no salt added tomatoes. Now you can use regular tomatoes. I was just traveling, as I said, and didn't have time to get and chop my fresh tomatoes, but any tomato will help. Now be careful because the pot is going to be hot. And cooked tomato, canned tomato also has more lycopene. And as far as this tomato chutney is concerned, what's going to happen is it's just going to sit there and get cooked until it comes together. So basically we are cooking this cumin and garlic and chili pepper down and then we'll see what happens. Okay, this has been cooked. We need to get it to that polenta texture. It does take a little long to cook, but you can... Of course, make it for a week, just like oatmeal and just scoop it every day and um, just have it for breakfast. Because the advantage of eating savory breakfast uh, with vegetables, if possible, is the, the taste bud adaptation to the more whole food plant-based food during the day and kind of controlling those cravings that we usually have when people eat sweet breakfast. You know, those thylakoid chemicals are released when we eat savory breakfast. And when I say savory, savory flavorful, not just filled with salt. So let me just see. Yeah, it's cooking. Like I said, it takes some time. I, I hope I can show you guys what's happening here. It's going to be hot. I'm not going to move. Oh, maybe I can move it here. Yeah, it's kind of coming together like polenta or even like a risotto. We'll keep cooking until all the water is absorbed. Now, if you need, if you feel that it's too dry, because many times, depending on the quality and how old the millet is or grain is, the ratio of water to millet will change. Okay, so if you feel it's not, uh, if it's getting dry, don't worry. Just sprinkle some water on top and cover it. Now, another trick when you are cooking, any grain or any vegetable while covering is you want to keep just a little tidbit uh, space here because if you close it completely then it changes the color of those vegetables so by by having a little bit of outlet you are going to maintain the nice color of those veggies as well just a side note the tomato garlic mixture is coming together and again because i used canned tomatoes the cooking time has gone down and garlic is was crushed and ready so that saves time and this chutney you can make it in bulk and uh, keep it and store it in the freezer in once it cools down in ice cube trays and you can take it out anytime you want sometime not sometimes but think of this chutney as a salad dressing okay 
think of it as a spread uh, if you're using if you're making a sandwich or a wrap think of this chutney as a component ingredient if you are making a burger for example two weeks ago i made this sweet potato lentil cilantro burgers and because i'm going out of country on tuesday i'm going to india by the way chef aj uh, i wanted to kind of clean up my refrigerator and i found a frozen cube of this tomato chutney from many months ago shall i say and of course didn't want to waste it because why would i right it has so so many things in there so i just added it into that burger and it added such nice smoky different flavor to this everyday burger that i was making so you never know unless we try we don't know how how things are going to pan out so have fun in the kitchen another tip when you are cooking this upma is when you are putting the lid back on you have to just make sure that you are running the spoon through through it so that just creates what i called as like steam pockets and it allows the steam to come come up from the bottom and facilitates the cooking now the tomato chutney i want to show you that it has been reduced uh, and it will get reduced some more depending on what texture you want so this is how this tomato chutney is looking now it doesn't have too much moisture left in there it has been reduced as you can see okay now this is all coming to together very nicely and it's even more thick now what we are going to do with this upma is turn the heat off and kind of allowing it to marinate on its own for a few minutes and you can also leave it there for like 15 minutes what that is going to do is anything that is stuck on the bottom of the skillet will get released because we are creating that steam pocket and that's the trick any time you are trying to scrape something that is stuck on the bottom of the skillet or the pot all you have to do is to add some water or some moisture cover it up and come back in like i don't know 20 30 minutes and you will see everything has come out so that's another trick when you are cooking with without oil because a lot of people say oh you know i i like to cook without oil but it's it sticks and this is one way to make sure that nothing is sticking to the bottom of the pan here let's go back to the chutney and see what's happening here now this chutney you can eat it as is or you can run it through the blender but because it's hot obviously i'm not going to run it through the blender but i'm going to use the hand blender and and see if i can grind it okay now the other variations of the tomato chutney is you can make it sweet and sour by adding dates you can change the spices to maybe ginger and cumin or mustard and cumin and ginger you can add some fresh coconut variety of things can be done and when i'm grinding I'm not going to completely turn it into a puree but keep it little bit chunky just for the texture. You want to make sure that you are getting the garlic and some of the red pepper that we added in here. Oh so, wow. Uh, you can smell the crushed garlic in here. I also uh, freeze my garlic uh, cloves. So that's done. And I'm going to show you how that looks. My another most favorite tool in the kitchen is this you know, spatula. Can't live without it. So the chutney is done. And again you can add uh, salt if you want. But I'm not going to it's going to be fine. I'm just going to ride with on the flavors okay let's see if you guys can see this okay here it is right so you have this chunky tomato chutney to go with that savory upma which is settling down as we speak and will be ready in few minutes okay all right any question chef ajay
Now, I was just wondering, do you ever use chutney, like, for example, to make, uh, to, to eat, like, with French fries? No. Oh, I think that would be good. Yeah. Oh, Jill wants to know if you have a cookbook of all your recipes, and Ruth says, where can I find the recipe? So uh, you can go on my YouTube video, I mean, YouTube channel, Nutrition is Deepa, and I don't have a cookbook. But what we have is a meal planning class that we do periodically. And also meal plans that that focus on ethnically uh, oriented recipes. So I just do meal plans and and the meal planning class, but no cookbook. Okay, so to make it even more nutrient dense and calorically lower in density, and to ride on the benefits of eating savory breakfast for weight loss or to for heart health or reduce your A1C number, whatever your health goal may be, I am going to serve the upma on top of some greens, okay? Now, I, they, these greens looked really fresh just a few, uh, couple hours ago, but they have been hanging out outside and it's quite uh, hot today. They look little wilted, but it doesn't matter because we are going to put the upma on top of this and serve with the tomato garlic chutney on the side. Now, who would say this is not a good meal? Tell me. Look how beautiful this looks. Flavorful. It has all the nutrients that you are looking for. It has fiber. It has slow acting carb. It has minerals, vitamins, multiple layers of flavor, ginger, garlic, cumin, mustard, onion, tomatoes, green pepper. Everybody's dancing together on this bed of power greens. So that is a traditional breakfast of upma and chat. So wow. my, me, I'm going to, of course, eat this breakfast for my lunch and going to top it off with this fresh mango from my friend's, uh, friend's garden. I mean, how, how lucky can I get today? So that's all folks. And maybe next time we'll, we'll explore breakfast from some other part of part of India or some other part of the world. Mm -hmm.